Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 2.5, Solving Problems with Rates of Change. So before we do that, you have to know that the instantaneous rate of change is zero whenever we have a maximum or a minimum. These are called turning points, and so if you have a turning point, um, you'll know that the instantaneous rate of change is zero, and the other way around. If you find an instantaneous rate of change is zero, then you know you've got some sort of turning point. There's actually a third turning point called a saddle point, but we don't have to discuss that until you get to the calculus course, so let's not worry about that yet. We need to know that when you have a maximum, if you test all of the instantaneous rates of change around it, as we go from left to right, and here's a maximum right here, we can see that the slopes are all positive as they approach it. It's zero right at the turning point, and then once you're past it, they're going whoops, downwards, negative. So they have, we're going from a positive slope to a negative slope. And if we look at the minimum, as we're approaching that minimum, the slopes are going to all be negative. Of course, at the minimum, the slope is going to be zero. And then as I pass it, the slopes become positive. So we're going from negative to positive if you have a minimum. And that's how you would test it. You just find the instantaneous rates of change around it, and then you could see whether it was a maximum or a minimum. So let's test this out. OK, so let's do example A. Matthew is riding a Ferris wheel, and his elevation is given by this formula. Brom thinks that Matt will be closest to the ground at 55 seconds. And so we're supposed to agree or disagree and support our answer. So we know that if he's closest to the ground, this would be a minimum. So we're going to test the um, instantaneous rate of change at 55 seconds and see if it's 0. If it is 0, then we will test before and after and then we'll know if that's a minimum or not because it's possible that if it's zero it's still a maximum so let's see we're going to use the difference quotient to do that so at t equals 55 seconds we're going to find the difference quotient we're going to do h of 55.01 minus h of 55 over 0 0.01, that's the difference quotient. And if you type this into your calculator, you're going to find it's 1.0 followed like by a whole bunch of zeros. So approximately 1.0 minus 1 over 0 0.01. So this is about 0. So actually, yeah, it is either a minimum or a maximum. And then we're going to test, fif let's say we're going to test um, 54 seconds and we're going to test at t equals 56 seconds, so before and after, and figure out if it is um, positive or negative in these points. OK, so we could just fill this in again. We're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to use a different color to make it a little clear. h of 54.01 minus h of 54 over 0 0.01 which if you do the calculations, and you can do that on your own, you can just pause the video and do that, ends up being about negative 0 0.03. And for this one, just use another color again, this is h of 56.01 minus h of 56, and we're just using the same formula over and over again. I know it's a little tedious. And that ends up being 0 0.02, positive. So we're going from a negative to a positive. So yes, it is a minimum. Or in other words, Matthew is at his lowest point. Literally. OK, example two. Show that the minimum value for the function f of x equals x squared plus 4x minus 21 happens when x equals negative 2. Now we could use the difference quotient again um, and just fill in the numbers and uh, do exactly what we just did. But I'm actually going to use the difference quotient to find the instantaneous rate change for the whole function. And then I'm going to plug it in three times and do it that way. So the difference quotient in this case, f of x plus h, minus f of x over h, and we'll just fill in f of x. I'm just going to move it over here. So x plus h squared, replacing x with x plus h here, times x plus h minus 21. And don't forget to use brackets, because otherwise you could get the wrong answer, x squared plus 4x minus 21 Oops. over h. 
and then we're expanding this 2xh plus h squared plus 4x plus 4h minus 21 and expanding this one and using distributive property throughout over h and we can see that the x squareds are going to cancel each other out the 4x's are going to cancel each other out and the negative 20 cancel 21 it cancels out as well so that we get 2xh plus h squared plus 4h over h. Now we can common factor out an h. And cancel. So we get 2x plus 4 plus h. And that h is going to be so small that it disappears. So it's really 2x plus 4. That is the instantaneous rate of change. So we want to know what the instantaneous rate of change is for x equals negative 2. We're just going to verify that it is 0. If it's not 0, then uh, life is good. And we can say, nope, that wasn't a minimum. The end. So the instantaneous rate of change at x equals negative 2 is equal to, we're just going to replace the x with the negative 2, 2 times negative 2 plus 4, which is 0, so it is a turning point. And then we're going to test the instantaneous rate of change, x equals, let's say before it, that's like negative 3 or something, so that's 2 times negative 3, <laughs> I was just thinking ahead there, plus 4, which gives us negative 2, so that's, we're on the right track for a minimum, and let's do an instantaneous rate of change afterwards, and it doesn't have to be the same distance afterwards. I'm going to use 0 because 0 is easy to use, 2 times 0 plus 4, which is a positive number 4, so we're going from a negative to a positive, and it is 0 at that point, so yes, it is a minimum. You can just double check what was the question show that the minimum value is, and we just did, we showed that it is 0, and then it goes from negative to positive. Okay, one more question. Um, let's say Alice has a culture of 25 bacteria that is growing at a rate of 15% per hour. She observes that the culture, she observes the culture for 12 hours. During that time period, when is the instantaneous rate of change the greatest? Okay, so this question is, um, not a trick question, but we could solve this in a smarter way by actually graphing it. Um, so if we graph this, we know that uh, if we just write this out, the growth or the population is starts with 25. That's the initial population. It's growing at a rate of 15% per hour, so 1.15 per hour, okay, where P is the population and h is the number of hours. Always define your variables if you need to. So p equals 25 times 1.15h. And if you're not really sure how to find that, we will be talking about it again soon. So you can just hold on to your hats. Um, because I know it's an exponential growth, it looks something like this. And you didn't have to know that it was an exponential growth in order to, f to find this answer. Um, and we start at 25 and then we're going to go up till 12 hours. So I'm going to make this 12 right here. So this is the, you know, this is the graph. And it asks us during the time period, when is the instantaneous rate of change the greatest? And since it's a graph that is increasingly increasing, we know that it must be at h equals 12. So we don't actually need to find the instantaneous rate of change to prove it. You can just explain it. So I'm going to say since, and this is a symbol for since, the graph is exponential. It is increasingly increasing. And the instantaneous rate of change is greatest at the end point. when h is equal to 12. And that's it. We could find the instantaneous rate of change for that, but this is a sufficiently mathematical explanation. So, 
basically what we did was we talked about the instantaneous rate of change for turning points as zero. We, turned, we talked about maximums and minimums and how we figure those out and we applied those to some word problems. And so that is it. Write down your questions and thanks for watching.